These folks have got their houses so full of stuff they don't use their front doors anymore. So that means we can't get in or can, nor can they get out. Ryan Pennington is a firefighter in Charleston and trains fellow firefighters on how to handle houses where hoarding has taken over. Hoarding stories have become a sensation on television, but it's anything but that for firefighters when tragedy strikes. And firefighters say it's a growing problem. The typical hoarding house creates several obstacles for the firefighters to overcome. Chief Stephen Parsons of the St. Albans Fire Department has been to a few hoarding fires himself. When you're trying to go in and stretch a hose line to extinguish the fire, it's hard to maneuver through all that debris. You're typically crawling and you have boxes stacked up to eight foot ceilings and any of those boxes fall over, now your, your pathway is blocked. The St. Albans Fire Department responded to a hoarding fire earlier this month. The flames were contained and the damage was minimal in comparison to how things could have gone, something Parsons credits to the knowledge of the firefighters. If anybody recognizes this as a, a dangerous fire, of course, the first in crew will announce, you know, this is an order house, so everybody knows we're now operating in a little bit more heightened, dangerous situation. Like firefighting is not dangerous enough, now you add that on top of it. And Pennington says it's not just the debris that makes things dangerous, but what it's made of. In the last 5, 10, 15 years, we've went from having normal household products made of like solid wood, oak, cotton, to now everything's manufactured out of plastics. What happens is it burns hotter, it burns faster, it produces a more toxic smoke and produces challenges for firefighters that they need to adjust for. And in hoarding conditions, you take the contents of this room and quadruple it. Dangers aside, Pennington knows all he can do is provide the training to ensure everyone's safety because the situation is the fault of no one. Just we need to realize that this is a psychological disorder. This is not a choice. In Charleston, Katie Brown, Eyewitness News.